Well, hey there, folks. It's Justin from CartoonSmart.com, and we're going to take a look at how to orient a, uh, a movie clip or graphic clip in uh, Adobe Animate to a circular path to basically make a, a perfect circular animation like this, or... Uh, an imperfect one. So, for example, you could bend this thing out, and then you'll notice that when we do 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 like that, right? So, uh, let's start from the beginning. So, I'm just going to grab a new document over here, and uh, just to kind of spice this up a little bit, uh, you know, you you could get away with just using any old symbol you want. So, for example, you could just make a a circle, hit F8 on it, and make it into either a movie clip or a graphic clip, and use that for testing purposes. Uh, in my case, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a new symbol so it'll actually just be a blank one so i'm going to call it pirate uh for right now i'm going to switch this to i'm going to leave it at movie clip but i'm going to um, go back and, and switch it to a graphic and i'll i just want to show you guys the difference so uh what i'm going to do now is i'm actually inside of the of the of the movie clip so i'm not on the main timeline um if i want to go back up here to scene one right now i'd have a little trouble getting back to it within the pirate symbol because there's nothing in there right now and it's it's not really on the stage anyway so without going anywhere from hitting a new symbol I'm going to just directly go in here to uh, import the stage and I've got a sequence of frames this is actually some uh, artwork that uh, subscribers to cartoonsmart.com uh, get or I should say yearly subscribers you guys get a whole big old bundle of all of our past uh, game art uh, packages and all right so here's this guy just basically attacking right and the neat thing about this is that by just importing in that first frame and i'll just go back and step through that again if i just import in this first one it prompts me if i want to bring in all the other frames that have that same naming uh sequence to them and it lays them out on the timeline here right uh so that's perfect all right uh, i'm going to go back over here to scene one and again you'll notice that there's nothing here right now so what i'm going to need to do is go over here to the library and if that's not already showing just go over here to uh, window find library there it is and you can see within the library there's, there's all those frames that i imported uh and then the one symbol that i've got so pirate right and drag them out he's a little bit big let's scale him down of course this is also a nice way to basically scale down a, a sequence of frames as well uh if i were to hit uh, command and return or basically just that's the hot key for uh control test movie you'll see uh there he is he's it, it's a movie clip he's he's doing his attacking thing endlessly even though we just have one frame out here on the timeline now if i double click inside of this you'll notice that within the symbol what we've got 12 frames right so you would assume that if i were to extend the timeline so i'm going to hit f8 over here so i've actually got some more frames to play with you would see the animation inside of there well that's how movie clips are different than graphic clips okay they're basically just these kind of um uh, well, they don't show, <laughs> there, there's a lot of differences, but they don't show on the main timeline as, as one of them, okay? Uh, so you can do things like basically chop this in half, you know, still publish it, and you still get a seamless loop through them, okay? Whereas if this was set to a graphic clip now, so I'm going to go over here to properties, set it to graphic. Now I can scrub through here and see the actual frames on the timeline, but again, the you know, the a pro or con depending on how you're looking at it if i were to go and remove these frames right the timeline's essentially going to end with him you know raising his sword up with not actually attacking so if i were to publish this right now you'd get a much different animation okay you would see and let's go even less than that just to really tell, show you guys a difference see what's going on there um so for doing things like exporting this out as an image sequence, if I wanted to re-export it out to individual PNG files, uh, you're going to need to use the um, it as a graphic clip. So you just kind of have to be aware of like you don't want to cut into any of your loops. So anyway, I'm going to so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use this now as the thing that I'm going to you know put on a circular path and uh just keeping in mind that i, I don't want to cut into the loop of this i know i've got 12 frames so what i should probably go out and do it as either 24 uh, 36 48 what's 48 times 2 96 right so let's go out and do well, well, 96 frames of this okay i'm gonna start them up here at the top and i'm going to oh, right click on this i'm going to go to add classic motion guide and uh you can see what it does is it makes makes this guide layer up here, and that guide layer layer is going to contain uh, basically just uh, a, a stroke or <laughs> it sounds terrible, but a a line shape. Okay, and it could be any line shape, but I'm going to go with, start with a circle, so or oval, and uh, there you go. Just draw that thing out. Okay, and this is what you guys saw me bend around in the beginning of the video. 
to turn my notifications off. And uh, now what we're going to do is just uh, I'm going to move this guy up. And you can see that the circle should probably go down a little bit because basically this symbol is going to attach itself to the line over here. So, you know, if it's too big, you're going to, you know, it's going to start to show outside of the, uh, the frame area here. Okay. So once you've done that, uh, I, I wouldn't even put any other frames on here yet. I would just right click on this and go to create classic tween. And you'll notice that when you do that, uh, since it is underneath a guide layer already, it's going to go ahead and click on snap. Uh, and then you also want orient to path. Okay. And now you'll notice that if we, I guess I should key this every 24 frames. Uh, if I hit F6 on the timeline right here, it's going to make this, you know, nice, perfect line. <laughs> you don't want a broken one uh, to, uh, to send this guy over here to this frame. And you'll notice right away, it's already oriented to the path. So let's do it again. I'm hit F6 over here, and I'm not even trying to keep him on the path, I should say. I'm just hitting the down arrow. I'm holding down Shift, too, so he goes in bigger in increments. But you'll notice, you know, he, he just stays. I'm just going up and down. He just stays on that path, right? So you, you see it even in the preview area, you don't actually have to fix it to it and remove it around perfectly over there. All right, what's my next 48 plus 24 is, uh, I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, <laughs> did I get that right? So 72, okay, yeah. All right, so then uh, finally, of course, we'll get him pretty much back to where he started again, right up here at the top. And is that about right? Okay, a little too far. And let's see what it looks like now. Again, I'm just testing the movie, going around, do, 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 do. And, and of course, you can do all sorts of fun things within here as well. You know, if we're keeping him kind of upright, but, you know, you could rotate him. We <laughs> flipping around. Uh, you can scale him, you know, do, do all that fun stuff. Well, we don't want to do that type scale. Oh, he's going off into the abyss, right? Uh, and then another thing to note here is if uh, so... Let's suppose you wanted to re-export this out as a, a PNG sequence. So you could go over here to export movie and export PNG sequence. The um, the only thing there is what you want to do is you want to take the stroke uh, and uh, either, yeah, no, just, just make it uh, alpha of zero. Okay. So that way it's just completely invisible. Uh, and that's, I don't even know if that's really considered a bug. It's just, if you were to export it out with that line showing, it's, uh, it, it would be in those... Um, in those uh, images that you export out. So there you have it, a uh, fun little way of putting something on a path. And, you know, you could set this to a wireframe, so that way when, even when you make that invisible, you can kind of, you know, still keep an eye on it. And we'll bend it around. Whoa, there he goes. It's like a water park. All right, how fun was that? So there you go, how to animate something on a path in, here's the redundancy, Adobe animate i can't tell you guys how many things i've had to write how to animate and animate it's just uh oh, i miss flash all right that's it folks